Hello viewers, Abron Cendric here, and today we are going to take a look at uh, John France. Now this is the predator that was uh, best known for bringing an alibi letter in his car where he talked about wanting to befriend and mentor the girl he was going to meet. And uh, I wasn't actually planning on doing this guy at first, but I was uh, doing some looking on uh, YouTube and other websites to see if he had been analyzed yet, and to my surprise he... I haven't found any uh, commentary video on this guy in particular, so we're going to go ahead and knock that out with uh, this video right here. So, let's get started. guy is inbound. I'm, I'm inside. He can't even see me. See, it looks like he's casing the house, but finally, he walks in the door. Now, he cased the house, you can tell, at, uh, by uh, Chris Hansen's commentary, obviously. And if you go to his chat log, you can see he was very, very cautious, very like hesitant that this was a cop trying to catch him and i guess he's just one of those guys who's too stupid to realize he'd just be further incriminating himself by doing that and he was so so worried that he was going to get arrested and yet here he is anyway shocking isn't it hello hey come on in i just gotta go get my coat off okay uh why don't you come out here for a second hey come out here for a second why don't you come on in and, uh, have he a sounded angry when he said that. He was like, like, he's thinking to himself probably right now, okay, she's not coming out right now. I think I'm pro I've probably been caught in a setup. And you can see a significant tone of kind of anger and disappointment in his voice, like he's some kind of angry dad or something. Like, listen for to this. Hey, come out here for a <laughs> it's like he sounds like a teacher that just caught a student cheating on a test, and he's like, little Jimmy. I'm out in the hallway for a second. Why don't you come on in and uh, have a seat real quick? Okay. And now he's busted. Please go ahead and come on in and have a seat on this floor. Everybody hold. Everybody hold. At this moment, you know, the Dark County Sheriff's detectives are getting into position, getting ready for him to leave after I've finished the interview. And how old are you? I'm 33. 33. Right. And what were you doing coming over here to meet a 14-year-old girl? Honestly, um, Honestly, I did not believe that that's who she said she was. I thought it was uh, probably a guy trying to mess with me. Now, he what? did not. Now, in the chat log, he did not think that it was just a guy trying to mess with him. He was 100% convinced it was a cop. Uh, let's just go to the chat log real quick and read some lines. Now, this has to be one of the most ironic... <clears throat> chat logs in to catch a predator history because you can see throughout this entire chat log he's like which department are you with huh greenville department police lol you think i'm a cop i'd be stupid not to yeah john you really would be stupid not to to think that this um 14 year old girl who just goes along with whatever perversion you have in mind is not actually a cop trying to set you up yeah the cops are hiring 14 year olds now no they pose as 14 year olds besides they're looking to bust pervs it's in the news every other week and he says all of this he knows that there's a very very high possibility that he's going to get caught so he still showed up for one of two reasons one, he didn't actually think there was any danger, and he thought that just saying all this would mean that she that she wasn't actually a cop, or he was just so self-absorbed to think that he could actually, you know, weasel his way out of a, a child solicitation arrest. But, um, as we all know, he did get convicted, so that didn't really work out for him. And he said, oh, I thought it was just a guy messing with me. Yeah, not at one any point. And this entire chat log, did he ever say, hey, are you a guy trying to mess with me? And he's just full of shit. It was uh, probably a guy trying to mess with me. What made you decide to come do this? I mean, help me out. Help me to understand had, it. You know, before I left, I, I was sitting there I, I was... thinking to myself, you know, this is not the right thing to do. I knew it wasn't. I, I mean, just from uh, the standpoint of, I'm 33 and she's claiming to be 14. Now, again, at no point in his chat log did he ever say, oh, I'm 33, you're 14, this isn't right, we shouldn't be together. No, he was only worried about preserving his own skin and uh, making sure he didn't get caught and face any consequences. You know, John France is probably my least favorite type of predator uh, throughout the whole show because they're very cagey, they're very worried about getting caught, and when you watch when you watch their video and you don't know anything about them other than just what you're seeing on the TV... 
Um, there's a chance that you might think, okay, maybe he didn't actually have any bad intentions. But then you go back to the chat log, and here he's saying shit like, except you probably get hit on my older guys. You know, you think if he'd thought, oh, the age difference, it's wrong, he would say something about the older guys being creepy for hitting on young girls, but obviously not, because that's what he does throughout this entire chat log, accompanied by, are you a cop? Are you a cop? Yep, you don't act 14 either, that's more grooming. Now this particular line is pretty funny. Interesting, you have a 35-year-old on your MySpace friends. You'd think, because he's already suspicious of it being a cop, that alarm bells would just be ringing all throughout his head, like throughout this entire conversation. But I guess, as uh, Chris Hansen would say, the internet addiction compulsions are just too strong. That was a pretty bad Chris Hansen impression, but anyway, let's keep watching. I mean, that's just, you know, and I don't know. I don't, I can't tell you. I'm just, I'm a lonely person and I wanted to just hang out. Just hang out. Yes. <laughs> and what did you talk about in this chat you had with her? She says, I now that that's an interesting line right there. He says, I just wanted to come over and hang out, but you see the decoy in the chat log, like specifically says, well, not specifically, she says something along the lines of, so do you want to just eat popcorn and watch boring movies, or do you want me to put on my skirt or my tight jeans? Yeah, let's go to that real quick. Yeah, here it is. Like, you just want to watch boring movies and eat popcorn, or should I put on a skirt or the good jeans? Lol, sweatpants or Jordash. Uh, you can wear whatever you want. What do you want to wear? Well, I'm kind of shy. Aw, you're sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely someone that just wanted to hang out. Yeah, he's very, very cagey throughout the whole encounter, and that and that honestly makes him kind of boring, because there's not really much to comment on, but the fact that if you gave him an anima, you could probably fit him into a tin can because of how full of shit he is. I like making my guy happy. You say, I like to please also. Right. I do. I do. No. I do like to please, but I was just coming over to hang out. I swear, I was just coming over to hang out. I know in my chat log I said, yeah, yeah, put on the skirt or the jeans or whatever, but no, I was just coming over to hang out, man. Not necessarily in a sexual way. But you see how that looks. She said, should I wear thong panties? You say, I like surprises. Which I do. Inappropriate. And then he said, which I do. Which I do like surprises. And then follows up with, oh, yeah, yeah, that's inappropriate. It's almost like he just doesn't realize what kind of a situation he's in even though he was being all cagey asking if asking if she was a cop and then chris hansen comes in and he's talking to him and he still doesn't fully realize like <laughs> yeah i like surprises it's like in the jim roush interrogation where he was talking about like how much sex he gets from girls at the swingers club to the cops even though he's been arrested for trying to have sex with a 13 year old girl I mean, that'd be like bragging about how much vodka you can drink in one sitting when you're being arrested for a DUI. She said, should I wear thong panties? You say, I like surprises. Which I do. Inappropriate. No question, inappropriate. So you do like surprises, and you wanted to arrange a surprise, yet you just want to hang out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's completely, completely, completely reasonable. To have a conversation and entertain and, and come over here is beyond inappropriate. Can I have you read something? Yes. But why would it be inappropriate if you were just coming over to hang out, John? This was one of the most surreal interviews. Here it comes. That I had conducted up until this point. He starts to say, well, you know, I even wrote a letter. I said, a letter? I wrote a statement. <laughs> you, or I can't you wrote a statement? Yes. Do you mind if I send somebody else to get it? I don't at all. Well, here, why don't you give me your keys? Where in your vehicle is it? It's on the passenger seat. On the passenger seat. I think it was Dell of Perverted Justice who went out to get the letter off the front seat of the car. And this is the letter you're talking right. about? Why don't you read it? That's right. At 8 p.m. tonight, I'm meeting a person whom I met online who claims to be a 14-year-old girl. I have no intention of supplying this person with alcohol. Having now, he said supplying this person with alcohol. In the chat log, they actually talked about uh, him bringing Mike's Hard Lemonade for a bit. And uh, he didn't bring it, so I, I, guess he, I, guess, I guess that was true. Sex or doing any other improper, unlawful conduct with this person. 
If she really is who she says she is, my intention is to befriend her and try to mentor her. Now that line, that line is what really fucks with me about this whole, this whole segment. Uh, let's just go back to the chat log and I want to ask you, does this sound like befriending and mentoring? So, you smoke? You mean pot or cigs? Either. Lol, you add to both. You're naughty, aren't you? Sometimes, winky face. I'm not like some big time pothead, but I like it now and then. Yeah, I've done it before, not often. I'm looking at your MySpace. You like? Hedonist, lol. <laughs> you really are naughty. Yeah, I like it. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's some, that's some mentoring you're doing, John. And on the uh, phone call um, that he made to the decoy, they talked about sex, and the decoy said, so aren't you going to bring condoms because I don't want to get pregnant or anything? And he said, well, yeah, I'm not going to do anything without condoms. And I'm actually not sure if he had condoms on his person or in his car or not, um, but still, just even saying that, that proves that he was willing to have sex with a 14 year old girl but he's like oh, i don't i didn't have any intentions and a lot of people like to compare the whole alibi letter thing to like a bank robber writing a note sa uh, saying if i get caught uh, robbing this bank i'm not actually robbing it i'm just trying to train the employees uh in case something like that happens and yeah it's pretty eerily similar her parents should be should also be aware of her behavior and possibly get her counseling so if you if so John if you wanted the parents to be aware of this situation then why did you come over when the parents weren't there? Explain that. That's what Chris should have said right there. So you're here to mentor this girl. I that to counsel her. Uh, I mean, that, uh, so I'm still a little bit confused. I mean I get Now he probably thought this through like a lot as he was on his way over there and um but still, you can tell that he's not very convinced in his own lie right here because he's like, uh, I, um, I mentor her. And, you, and I think he knows that Chris and everyone around him knows he's just full of shit. Why you wrote the letter, I think. Right. Just in case you walked into a bad situation and you got hurt. Right. Right. For my own safety. Right? For your own safety. Right. So I wanted to be there to be a, a record of that someone could go to to get information from but i guess at the end of the day i just really wonder why you'd even you know the only record they really need to get information from is your chat log john come over here in the first place if you were so concerned why not just blow it off call uh the police and say hey look there's a girl right. home alone and i can you may want to go check I on her. don't you think that would have been the but, better thing to but, do but that I considered I, don't I considered that but instead I just turned up in the dead of night when her parents weren't home i'm a great guy i did consider that do you, do you ever watch TV? I do. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? I... <laughs> and this is when it really dawns on him, and he's like, hey, did you watch Dateline NBC? And hit, and then um, all the brain cells start firing off, like, oh god, what did I really just walk into? I... And that, that facial expression right there, you, where and when his mouth kind of, like, twitches like that, like right there right there and he's like hmm i don't know what's dateline nbc i don't know about it have before i think have you ever seen one of our stories on computer predators i don't think so no okay. i'm chris hansen with dateline okay. nbc we're doing a story on adults who try to meet and then hook up you know, I don't think he was being entirely truthful there, just judging by his demeanor and facial expressions. I think he knew what he was walking into at some point during this, but he didn't want to say because that would just look even worse on him. It's like, okay, you showed up here and you knew about the investigations, but why did you still come if you thought that this was this was what that this was what was gonna happen? Kids on the end. And this is one of those stories. Okay. If you if there's anything else you want to tell us, we'd be happy to hear it. If not, you're obviously free to go. No, I don't have anything further to add. I think that pretty much covers it all, and I'm ashamed. Well, John, if you were coming over to hang out, then uh, then why are you ashamed? What do you have to be ashamed about? You're just coming over to, you know, mentor her, be her friend. What do you have to be ashamed about, man? Well, I, I just never seen it before. I was kind of blown away by it. Alright. At this time we just want to talk to you. And 
talk about some things that occurred here tonight. The detectives who talked to him and investigated the case pretty much thought that he was trying to protect himself. Why did you write a letter and leave in your truck? Because to try to cover. Now this truck. is where he really gets called out on his up. shit. You knew letter and leave in your truck because to try to cover yourself. I didn't. Because know. you knew you messed up. You knew why you were going there. And you wanted to help yourself out if you got caught. What was this guy up to? Well, we refer to it at the office as an alibi letter. Alibi letter? Yeah. It was composed in such a way that it's our belief that he po put it there, that if he should get caught, made it appear that he was completely innocent. A lot of premeditation there in my book. At the end of the day, he was arrested. Uh, he was charged with uh, crimes related to online solicitation, attempted sex with a minor. 30 days in jail with 36 months of probation. You know, I honestly think he should have gotten 30 years just for thinking that the cops were so unbelievably stupid that that letter would fool them. But, you know, that's, that's just me. A little snippet. You say, which department are you with? Right. She says, huh? You ask Greenville. She says, department. You say, police. Laugh right. out loud. You think I'm a cop? I'd be stupid not to. Right. I would be stupid. And I am stupid. And then you say, I can't believe... Now this is a guy, he just absolutely cannot for the life of him pick a narrative and stick with it. It's either, oh, I was just coming to hang out, befriend and mentor her, or, or oh, I'm so ashamed, it was so stupid, it was so inappropriate. You know, trying to mentor a teenager is not inappropriate, so, John, if you're ashamed of trying to mentor her, like, what what is there about that to be ashamed about? I mean, it's like your parents catch you, like, sticking your hand into the cookie jar at night, and then they come in and they say, hey, Johnny, uh, why, why are you trying to steal a cookie? And he's like, and you're like, oh, I'm so ashamed of trying to take the cookie, but I wasn't t trying to eat the cookie. Uh, I just wanted to, like, uh, put it on a napkin so you guys could eat it in the morning. And you've already admitted that you're guilty about it, so why even bother lying at this point but you know john has his head too far up his ass and he's so convinced that everyone else but him is stupid so that's why he wrote the letter and that's why he still ended up coming like so many before him and i uh, think that ab that about covers this commentary uh for today so um let me know what you think and i will see you next time